here the language you need to observe it seems informal but it is not good morning sir is formal and hi sir is informal the conversation says here he requests the shopkeeper to give to wrap it for him he has already purchased so the next dialogue should be about requesting very important hello hi namaste and welcome to vidyashram the temple of excellence i am nanda kishore faculty of english in vidyashram mysore in my previous session i had begun the content language function and also in my previous session i had spoken about how to start a conversation and i have given plenty of explanation and plenty of examples i believe i have reached you with previous session let us see what i'm going to discuss in today's session i will be discussing making requests nanu modle hellage previous session alli how to start a conversation anuvanta ond concept bage maatadidini we know that we will meet or we have already met a lot of new people in our lives tumma janarna hosuburna meet martivi hosuburna meet madadaga how to start a conversation athwa ondu ಒಂದು ಮಾತುಕತೆಯನ್ನು ಹೇಗೆ ಶುರು ಮಾಡ್ತೀವಿ ಅನ್ನೋದೇ ಒಂದು ಯಕ್ಷ ಪ್ರಶ್ನೆ ಆಗಿರುತ್ತೆ ಕೆಲವ್ರಿಗೆ ಮುಜುಗರ ಇರುತ್ತೆ ಇನ್ ಕೆಲವ್ರಿಗೆ ಈಗೋ ಇರುತ್ತೆ ವಾಟ್ ಎವರ್ ಇಟ್ ಮೈಟ್ ಬಿ ದ ರೀಸನ್ ಬಟ್ ವಿ ಶುಡ್ ನೋ ಹೌ ಟು ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಅ ಕಾನ್ವರ್ಸೇಷನ್ ವಿತ್ ಅ ನ್ಯೂ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಆರ್ ಸಂಬಡಿ ಹೂ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಫೆಮಿಲಿಯರ್ ಆರ್ ಲೆಟ್ ಎಸ್ ಸೇ ಸಮ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರೇಂಜರ್ ಬಟ್ ಇನ್ ಟುಡೇ ಸೆಷನ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಮೂವ್ ಆನ್ ಟು ಹೌ ಟು ಮೇಕ್ ರಿಕ್ವೆಸ್ಟ್ ಇನ್ ಪ್ರೀವಿಯಸ್ ಸೆಷನ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ನಾನು ಹೇಳಿದ್ದೀನಿ ಹೇಗೆ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಮಾಡಬೇಕು ಹೇಗೆ ಅದನ್ನ ವೈಂಡ್ ಅಪ್ ಮಾಡಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ಬಟ್ once you start making or once you start your conversation in between if you happen to make a request ella ondu kade neevu ondu sambhashanayanna ondu start martira start madadaga ella ondu kade neevu ondu request madbekagirutte hege start martira how do you request should it be in formal or should it be in informal ee ondu concept na ee session alli nan discuss martini let us start with how to make requests or making requests so we know in your workbook we are talking about first puc workbook in this unit we learn how to make and respond to requests it is how to respond to the requests and how to make the requests idr bagge maatadakke anta start madadaga kelavurge tumane nagu varutte you might feel like laughing out loud sir we are in first puc and do you think that we are in first puc without knowing how to make requests and how to respond to requests yes i am not saying that you don't know but i would say majority of the people would not be knowing how to formally make requests informally anybody can make ಸುಮ್ಮನೆ ಹಾಗೆ ಕ್ಯಾಶುವಲ್ ಆಗಿ ಯಾರು ಬೇಕಾದ್ರೂ ರಿಕ್ವೆಸ್ಟ್ ಮಾಡಬಹುದು ಬಟ್ ಹೌ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಯೂಸಿಂಗ್ ದ ಫಾರ್ಮಲ್ ಲ್ಯಾಂಗ್ವೇಜ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಹೌ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಗ್ರಮ್ಯಾಟಿಕಲಿ ಯೂಸಿಂಗ್ ದ ಸೆಂಟೆನ್ಸಸ್ ಇನ್ ಯುವರ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಮಿನೇಷನ್ ಸೊ ಫಾರ್ಮಲ್ ಆಸ್ ವಿ ನೋ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಲೆಟ್ ಎಸ್ ಸಿ ಹೌ ವಿ ಮೇಕ್ ರಿಕ್ವೆಸ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಯೂಸಿಂಗ್ ದ ಫಾರ್ಮಲ್ ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ಮಲಿ ಐ ಕೀಪ್ ಟೆಲ್ಲಿಂಗ್ ಫಾರ್ಮಲ್ ಅಂತ ಬಂದಾಗ ಯು ಸ್ಪೀಕ್ ಟು ಯುವರ್ ಅಥಾರಿಟೀಸ್ ಪ್ಲಸ್ ನಥಿಂಗ್ ಬಟ್ ಅಥಾರಿಟೀಸ್ so informal you know that it could be your subordinates or it could be your colleagues anybody equal ag irtare nimma colleagues irtare or it could be subordinates nimma kelagade nimma kai kelage work maduvanta employees agirbodu or it could be somebody else so let us concentrate on formal language do you think it would be possible for you to complete this project so formal yes somebody higher than you is talking to you now or you can just talk to anybody for that matter could you possibly think about some better idea could you possibly think we would be grateful if you let us know if you are going to continue in this institution i'm just giving an example here completing this dots for that matter you can think of any other sentences i hope you don't mind me asking if you are done with your work because i have something else for you 
I'm sorry to trouble you, but would you mind suggesting me some ideas to finish off my project? So these are formal, but when I say formal and informal, you might be wondering, sir, don't you think it seems informal at times? It does at times, but it depends on how well you receive and how well you reciprocate to that. When we go to informal, just look at it, observe, you couldn't, you couldn't finish the project, could you? Just come back to this. Do you think it would be possible for you to finish this project? Here, the language you need to observe, it seems informal, but it is not. As I told you, it depends on how well you receive it and reciprocate to it. Do you think it would be possible for you to finish this project by this weekend? Your manager is asking you or you are asking your colleague. Or, sir, do you think it would be possible for you to hire my friend for this job? What happens when you take out do? Sir, you think it would be possible for you to hire my friend to this position? Just a word might change the context from formal to informal. You think, you think, think about it once again. Could you possibly help me out with this problem or solving this problem? What happens when you change this sentence structure? It becomes informal. Let's go to informal. Can you, can you come back? Could you becomes can you in informal. It might seem funny. It might be shocking. And those who watch this video might be amazed because after you learn that these are the words you have been using to talk to your boss informally, instead of using formal language, you would be pretty shocked for sure. So can you please let me in? Can you please help me out? Can you please maintain some silence? Informal. So formally, could you please get up? Let us say, when we use this, let's talk about this sentence. When a teacher walks into the classroom, he or she has the rights to maintain silence in the classroom and she can use this word. Can you please maintain some silence? Or she or he might also use, could you please maintain some silence? Formal and informal. It is quite just a thin line you can see between formal and informal language when it comes to making requests. Will you do me a favor and uh, I will take you out for dinner. If you're going to help me out with this problem, I'm going to take you out for dinner. You haven't got, have you? You haven't got a solution for this problem, have you? Informal way. Will you or would you or could you please help me out? I'm in a big problem. I'm in a trouble. So I want somebody to help me out. Mind doing it? Mind doing it? I'm asking you people, would you mind uh, helping me out with this problem? Now, don't ask me what the problem is. Next, here is the conversation between two people. The conversation between Ravi and Mr. Kamat. So, let us see who is Ravi and Mr. Kamat here. Ravi goes to his general manager. With this, we get to know that Ravi is a subordinate and Mr. Kamat is superior to Ravi. With a request for 10 days leave, which will not usually happen. But Ravi has gone to Mr. Kamath. So how will the conversation take place? This might seem very plain, very simple, very ordinary, but try to observe each and every dialogue between these two people. Ravi, good morning, sir. Formally wishing. Remember, 
in my previous session i had spoken about good morning sir is formal and hi sir is informal so let us talk about formal here mr kamath good morning ravi he responds to his greetings in a formal way he would have just told hi ravi so that's what we are talking about in today's session it's about using formal language when do we use formal and when do we use informal what's the matter you look worried so it's his right being a general manager he needs to take care of his employees ravi my son is unwell and needs to have an operation i would be grateful if you could permit me to take 10 days leave so he is asking 10 days leave asking 10 days leave is not a big thing but how is he making request think about it my son is unwell and needs to have an operation he is giving a clear description why he wants 10 days leave and apart from that observe from now on i would be grateful i would be grateful very humble ravi is being very humble and being very genuine he says i would be grateful if you could if you could permit me to take 10 days leave i'm going to be very thankful just 10 days because it's a matter of my son it's about his health look at the words observe the words he is using formally asking or making the request to take 10 days leave how could these be words replaced if it is informal so do you mind giving me 10 days leave or can i get 10 days leave it is informal because he's not giving any reason and is just straight away walking up to his boss and asks sir can i have 10 days leave and when boss asks him what is the reason behind taking 10 days leave he would respond it's well like you know like i have personal issues i don't have to tell it to you then it becomes informal when can this happen when there is no good relationship between the boss and the employee or if both the people happen to be the colleagues or even it can move apart from the boundary outside the boundary saying that these two happen to be very good friends but when you are talking to your superior you need to make use of such kind of words here that is the main intention here but these days i have seen students and the young generation they don't know how to plead people how to make request how to apologize for that matter because i get to see a lot of youngsters young blood they don't like to apologize apologizing doesn't mean you're wrong let us come back to that matter as we proceed further and i have already told you there are 16 language functions language components i will be speaking about even apologizing is one of those contents when i come to that matter i'll speak a lot about how well you can develop the habit of apologizing even when you're not wrong or even when you're right now mr kamath that shouldn't be a problem of course when somebody comes and makes a request with a genuine reason he or she has to grant the person leave of course that shouldn't be a problem mr das can take care of your projects while you are away being the general manager it is his rights it is his duty to make sure that the projects will go on it should not be kept pending so he's assuring okay just leave out all leave aside or leave out all this pressure all this work pressure you can just carry on with your family or son's issue no problem ravi thank you very much sir thank you is not enough thank you very much as i told you thank you so much thank you is just informal thank you very much thank you so much sir is formal Mr. Kamath, you are welcome, Ravi. Don't worry. Now he is assuring, you are welcome. Formal again, formal. Don't worry. Your son is going to be fine. Your son is going to be fine. So that's how it ends. And observe the conversation. There is not even a single word. You can see 
n form there is no informal word in this conversation let us move on to the next content there is activity one if you go to your workbook there is an activity there are two activities out of those two activities the first one says Sarala asks her nephew to help her with a heavy suitcase while boarding a bus with the help of the expressions given in the box develop a dialogue between Sarala and Naveen they can give you this content and ask you they can ask you in your examination to develop a dialogue between two people or two characters it is left to you there is not even a single thing you can see Naveen can you and stopped and rest three blanks you have to fill it in with the meaningful conversation you should know one thing this blank doesn't mean if blanks in kotidare don't assume or presume that you can fill in anything that comes to your mind. Let me just give you an idea for filling these blanks. Now you should know that Sarala is a character and Naveen is a character here or two people. Right? So what is the conversation all about? Sarala is struggling to lift the heavy suitcase and she is asking her nephew to help her out with the heavy suitcase to board the bus. Now Sarala, remember this, helping. So, Nivu kastadali daga, atwa tondreli daga, atwa problem ali daga. How should you begin the conversation? How, how should you make the request? Request and the bandaks na? Sarala, Naveen, can you help me? Boarding the bus, right? Can you help me lift? this suitcase suitcase please please is very important now with this conversation there is one more point of view there is one more question usually students get what is that sir should we begin this sentence with please Naveen can you please help me lift this suitcase question mark Yes, possibly right. There are possibilities. You can begin, you can place this please just when you begin the sentence, please can you help me out? No issues. And can you help me please is also no issues. But placing the word please in the sentence is very important because you are requesting. Remember that we are talking about the concept how to make request. Please is very important. You are pleading. Naveen, so how should Naveen respond? Should he be formally responding to his aunt or not? Yes, of course. Yes, of course. I can help you. Let me tell you one thing. Whatever I'm writing on the board or whatever words I'm using here, is not the ultimate you can develop the conversation according to your needs nan matte helta idini nan il bardiddalla final alla neevu nimma ondu develop nimma ondu conversation na develop maadkobodu aa develop heg maartira this is why i tell you heg maartira antandre nimge eshtu padagala banda irutte nimmatra eshtu padagalu various padagalu irutte aa padagalana use maartta hogi that is why i tell you you need to have a good vocabulary Yes, of course. Yes. Yes, of course. I can help you. Or, by all means, I can help you. Or, you can update or upgrade. It's my pleasure to help you. It's my pleasure to help you out. So, Sarala. So, when Naveen agrees that he's going to help his aunt, of course, she should feel happy. So, she should say, let us say, like, you know, God bless you. God bless you. 
or you can also just go or jump into another context another angle you know this suitcase is very heavy or you can just write i am finding it really difficult to lift this suitcase i am just only telling it i find it i find this suitcase or case heavy because we are talking about heavy here so let us use this i find this suitcase really heavy i am finding it really difficult to carry this heavy suitcase make it meaningful right so once if this conversation is over god bless you of course you should thank thank you or my pleasure no issues i find this suitcase really heavy for that matter how do you respond no need to worry when i am here or no need to worry i will really help you or no need to worry at all enough one simple conversation no need to worry about the suitcase or no need to worry about boarding the bus i will help you but you should know one thing that dialogue should be complete just recall we spoke about sarala finding difficult to board the bus with heavy suitcase and try to read this dialogues here it seems it is complete it is complete now apart from this there is one more activity activity 2 just take out your workbooks and observe the picture here so this is the picture you find in your workbook you get to know that this is a book store or stationery just observe this picture there are characters somebody is holding book and somebody is reading the book so use your common sense after looking at this picture i'm sure you have imprinted this picture in your minds let's move ahead to the conversation mr keshav buys a book he is buying a book buys a book from a bookshop he requests very important he requests who is he mr keshav the shopkeeper to gift wrap it for him write a conversation between them shopkeeper the very first conversation is shopkeeper may i help you or how may i help you or how can i be at your service you can use multiple language multiple words but you should have one thing in your mind whether to use formal or informal language when it comes to the conversation building or dialogue building identifying to use formal or informal is very important if you go to previous conversation we have used informal and formal as well because sarala is asking help from her nephew navin so it is of course when you're talking to your family members you can use your informal language and necessarily not be informal you can also use formal as well so mr keshav remember he has already purchased may i know the cost of this book may i know the cost or the price of this book may i know the price or the cost of this book formal or would you mind telling me the cost of this book next shopkeeper has to respond in a formal way it is 200 rupees sir 200 rupees now keshum has to build another conversation so how would he respond the conversation says here he requests the shopkeeper to gift wrap it for him he has already purchased so the next dialogue should be about requesting very important he is going to request the shopkeeper to gift wrap the book for him 
Would you please, would you? Please gift wrap it for me. Or could you please do it for me? Would you or could you? Could you please gift wrap it for me? Now, shopkeeper, if he's asking, now Keshav is asking to gift wrap it. If shopkeeper has a bit of common sense, the first thing you should ask is because Keshav is asking the shopkeeper to gift wrap it. Of course, if it is gift wrapped, nobody would like to leave the price tag as it is. It is a common sense. So shopkeeper has to question, should I remove the price tag? Or if you don't want to go with that ending, if you don't want to end the conversation in that way, from that angle, you can also say, shopkeeper, of course I can, yes I can, and end the conversation. And what would be the end here? Thank you so much, sir. Right? The formal one. But let us use the other angle and the other answer. What is that shopkeeper is doing? Should I, should I remove the price tag? As I told you, remember one thing, we can also end this conversation in a different way. But however you end, when you end the conversation, it doesn't matter how well or how badly you end. But this conversation, this dialogue should make sense to the evaluator. Should I remove the price tag? Yes, please. Simple. So don't forget, if you cannot end this dialogue in a proper way, or if there is no link between the conversations, then you're going to lose a mark. The reason why these blanks are given, it's because to test how well you have the spontaneity, how well you have the flow of ideas while presenting or while writing the answers. One should always make sense when you read it. Just try to go through this. There is a link between the conversation or the questions and the answers. Somebody is making request and somebody is replying to it. And if there is a breaking or if there is no link between one conversation and the other, then of course it doesn't make any sense. So this is a simple idea you need to follow. Remember one thing, once you start writing the conversation in your examination, there should be a flow of idea one after the other. If there is no link between the previous sentence or the previous dialogue and the following dialogue, then of course you are going to miss out a mark or two. So don't forget this rule. Try to remember this. Try to take up lot many conversations. Think about or else you can orally think. No need to write and practice. You can just take up a situation on your own. Think about how well you are going to build the conversation and from the other end, you need to pretend that you are the other person and how well you are going to reciprocate or to respond to the request somebody is making. So that's it for today's session. In my next session, I will be discussing lot many language functions. Keep practicing. We'll meet you in the next session. Have a good day.